So they're two different uh, concepts. The plane of representation occurs once you acquire language. And then everything you perceived is perceived through a grid of words. Uh, and uh, and there's, a, there's a whole science of uh, semiotics and linguistics uh, that have developed in, uh, in modern and postmodern philosophy that has actually come to a very uh, uh, deep understanding of, of how that, that plane operates, how we got trapped on it, and even, even what is the, the way out of it. So the, uh, the plane of representation is sustained by the mental chatter that is constantly going on. And to use the, let's say, a, a, a Lacanian psychoanalytic terminology that I think may clarify it, uh, uh, Lacan divided the I into two levels. I think we need to actually uh, say it's three. But he said we have the eye of the enunciation and the eye of the statement. What that means is there is a part of you that before you speak to someone, you begin to have to formulate a thought on the plane of representation. But that thought is not fully formulated, and there is a certain amount of freedom from knowing what you're going to say until it's actually said and the statement is made, right? Uh, and at that level of the eye of enunciation, there is just enough free will uh, and a time lag that one could alter what one says. It doesn't often happen, and that's why there are such things as Freudian slips, where you say what you wish you hadn't said and didn't mean to say. Um, but the, the eye of the enunciation has a slight degree of freedom. Behind that, I, the yogis, I, I think, would all agree that there is an eye of pure awareness, okay? Now, the, again, to go back to the Trika Wisdom School, they divide it into four levels. So you, you have uh, the, the level of, a, of, let's say, the archetypal vision of possibilities of what could be expressed. Then you have uh, that coming into thought and then it being uh, expressed in, in, in words and actions. And a la level on top of that which is the absolute freedom beyond even any uh, archetypal um, uh, possibilities of the imaginal level of consciousness uh, producing a certain uh, outcome. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> but if we just start with a simpler version of the, th of the eye of the, of the uh, awareness, that I has no identity because it's not yet on the plane of representation. Once you make a statement, let's say to go back to what I'd said earlier, I, I'm going to have dinner, I'm hungry, I want to do this, or I want to take a walk, or there's something. You, you, you have identified with the body that will act. You're no longer identified with the mind. And so the representation has now become the gross uh, level of, of action. So Rene Descartes, who is like the founder of modern philosophy back in the 1600s in France, <clears throat> he said that the, uh, basically, well, co cogito ergo sum, the famous phrase, I think, therefore I am. He could not have said, I'm eating dinner, therefore I am or I'm going to take a walk, therefore I am. Because you could be fooled into having a dream where you were eating dinner or taking a walk, or hallucinating it, or hallucinating something else, and it wasn't really happening. But you could not deny the fact that you were having that thought. Okay? So, but in fact, even the thought turns out not to be your own. It's not you having the thought, the thought is having you. 
So you have to go back to the eye of awareness that is free of thought to reach a point where there is absolute indubitable being, right? Because you could always be fooled uh, by a, a deceptive idea or, or delusion at those other levels. If you can stay in that eye of awareness, you can reprogram the, the eye that speaks and the one that thinks. But until you have reached that level of differentiation and realize you are different from who you think you are <clears throat> and from who others think you are because of how you behave. <clears throat> if you are free of those identifications and projective identifications, then you have a sufficient margin of freedom to alter the, the role that the character you have been playing is, uh, is, is playing and, and its uh, functions, its goals, its, uh, <clears throat> it, its, its whole frame of reference. But that freedom does not exist within the other levels. So the plane of representation is the ignorance of the fact that you are not the I that appears in thought or, or in, uh, in actual uh, vocalized words. <clears throat> but most people have not come to the clear awareness that they are not the one who thinks, that that I is an artifact of programming. I hope that clarifies it. The question of superposition, well, that, that has many uh, different uh, levels to it because there's quantum superposition, there's the, the superposition of uh, the quantum waves and the qualium waves. I won't go into all that, but in relation to what I was just saying, there's a superposition of what I perceive and what I project. At the ego level, one assumes that one is seeing reality as it is. <clears throat> one thinks one's common sense is, is telling you the truth about reality. <clears throat> That's a very naive attitude. When you realize that there is another level of uncommon sense that can recognize your projections and others' projections and see that everyone is actually living in their own delusional ignorance of what is really happening because they're subject to their programming, then you have the ability to think coherently, finally. And it's only when you can think coherently that you can remove these incoherent superimpositions of projections upon uh, the field of the explicate order and then perceive it from uh, a, a deeper and deeper place, ultimately beyond even time and space and the unfoldment of uh, the linear succession of, of moments of time and, and recognize the eternal within the temporal.